Hello everyone. So today we are going to talk about uh, transportation management, introduction to transportation management. Uh, we will, there would be folks joining. So let's then join and I'm going to share my whole screen. Everybody will be on mute if uh, not speaking. Only unmute during question and answer session and uh, we kind of give everybody a chance to speak so that uh, everybody will have a say and I can address those one by one. If you have a questions during the session, uh, do write it in the question and answer section of a chat so that I can take it up and talk about it. Um, so that we will not be disturbing everybody, but uh, can be addressed. If you are having some issues with audio or any other uh, issues with the uh, meeting and all, you can reach out to the number over WhatsApp. <clears throat> Post session, if you have queries which were not answered during the session or you came up with the new queries, then please write it to support at sastrageek.com. And there are other trainings available. So please feel free to uh, visit sastrageek.com website and you can uh, see other offerings which are going on. Uh, Again, talking about me, <laughs> uh, your trainer. I am in, uh, my name is Adi Kumar. Uh, I am having 14 plus years of experience in SAP consulting. Um, I have been with the big fours, all other companies, <laughs> and have been playing at various roles. I started as a small consultant to now as a solution architect and lead consultant project manager. I have a certification in SAP TM 9.5. I am a Prince2 practitioner, which is a, a project management relevant uh, certification. So yes, I am uh, that qualified. I do have hands-on experience in various uh, TM versions, 9.1, 9.5. Uh, and I do work with other SAP modules as well. Those are listed here. Uh, mostly I work in logistics modules. Uh, I do work with the finance module wherever there is an integration between logistics and finance. Uh, I'm well versed in uh, PTP, uh, P2P and OTC processes. I'm uh, able to do everything on those lines. So whenever there are any issues on that one, we will, I will try to address those. In my career, I have done multiple projects. Uh, the list is uh, big, but uh, just to name a few things, I have done four implementation projects, multiple enhancement projects where the, uh, you enhance certain functionalities or altogether bring in new implementation or a new module into existing landscape rollouts and support projects. Uh, I have a, a background of chemical engineering. So if you have, uh, you might be getting examples from me during uh, our course would be uh, mostly with the, my work experience wise or my education background wise. Uh, I have carried out various trainings, uh, specifically uh, end user training, the uh, user personal trainings, as well as all other uh, trainings. Uh, those are done in various modules. So it is, uh, I am uh, well aware of many student questions or the folks who are having uh, questions regarding training and all. So we will be, I will try to address those. Uh, so moving on to the course. So here the course is about uh, SAP transportation management. So 
what we learn in this one is uh, transportation management business processes, the configuration and master data required for this processes, how the end-to-end -end process works, PM process with advanced theory applications, and uh, this will be preparing you for the uh, TM certification examination. Um, so it's not necessarily only these many things. There would be some additions from my end. So certain things which I have experienced during my project uh, project uh, experiences and all. So those would be added in this one so that uh, I will try to make everything possible that uh, just a moment, something came up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so we will be covering certain things more. Just uh, okay. Okay. So those are the parts. Let's go to the next slide. Uh, so who can join this training? The training is for somebody who is actually working as a transport management, but wants to come to ERP world. That would be, uh, he is, those are welcome. Who are uh, already working as a SAP consultant and want to upgrade or cross skill for them as well. And uh, definitely some practical insights from my side to give you a, a better exposure and uh, improve your business process understanding. Uh, let's go to the next slide. So let's start with the, what is transportation management? So <clears throat> transportation management uh, from, is a part of supply chain management. So supply chain management covers all logistics. Uh, so it starts from demand or customer uh, requirement, then it is getting converted into a, a manufacturing of that particular product. So which is requiring you to utilize or consume raw materials to produce the uh, finished goods. So the raw materials requirement might trigger for the procurement process. And uh, then once that is manufactured, then it would be stored, which is like an inventory management and which is a part of warehousing or the new world uh, terminology for SAP is extended warehouse management. Then the transportation and execution. Uh, transportation would be part of execution where you are taking the finished product to the end user, uh, the, where the requirement was initiated for consumption. So you will be doing, bringing or moving the product from your factory to the customer. So these are the logistics activities and uh, transportation from, there are various definitions for a transportation management, but uh, I prefer to take the example or simple definition that moving material from one point to another point. This is a very simple definition and it involves, uh, it covers everything. So transportation management is a coordination and collaboration <clears throat> activity between staff, different levels and functions. So it's not just like uh, you carry out this uh, activity as on its own, it involves interaction with different uh, functions. So let's take uh, example, I want to deliver a material from my end to a customer. So uh, you need to first know from where you are going to pick which warehouse you are going to pick. That is, uh, so you have to discuss with that, with the warehouse as well as the executioner. Then you need to know what are you going to transfer. So you need to know inventory things, how it is packed, whether it is a single item or multiple uh, boxes combined to form a pallet or in a pallet there is only one, one material coming in. So those are the things which will be uh, interactions with different functions. And then uh, execution is not just carried by one person, but 
would be involved multiple folks. So there could be a approval process uh, where you will need a different approvals. Oh, if I want to do, do transport these dangerous goods, then how I should do that one? There should be certain uh, approvals because there are uh, some guidelines, safety guidelines you have to follow and those needs to be documented and you should have those as a um, documentation while you ship or do the transportation. So these are the various ways of doing that uh, coordination work as well as collaboration of various levels to carry out a seamless uh, transaction. If this coordination and collaboration is not there, then there would be a lot of problems which might be a dissatisfaction of customer who would be like, hey, you guys are not doing this thing on properly or something like that. So let's take a very simple example of that collaboration or dissatisfaction is, let's say I order an Amazon product, uh, headphone on Amazon uh, or mobile phone on Amazon. I received the product, but it's like a, not in a properly packed. There are other damages onto that one, whether it is not working. These are kind of examples where I feel that there is no proper coordination happened. So packing was not good. If the packing was good, but the product quality was not maintained, which is another problem. If everything is good, but let's say if mobile never started, <laughs> there could be a problem of a software at that end. So these all things needs to work together for that whole wheel to work uh, smoothly from starting point to end point. So this is uh, the supply chain never works uh, standalone. You have to have a coordination part uh, and collaboration of everyone in uh, this process. Without collaboration, uh, there is nothing happening. You have to have a, a smooth transition from one, one function to another function so that it works. So let's go. Uh, I hope the transportation management or what is transportation is uh, clear to everyone. So let's move on to the next slide. So here we wanted to understand what are different types of transportation. There are two, I listed, there are two types of transportation, internal and external. Internal is nothing but uh, it is done within the same premise or same plant for a simplicity or same warehouse. So what are these? This could be like I'm taking one box from my desk to the production line and giving them for trial or testing. That is one example of transportation, internal transportation. Or that could be another example, say, uh, raw material has been brought from a, a warehouse to production line for producing uh, the finished material. So that way, these kind of uh, uh, examples, like a, these are like a internal transportation. There could be something in within warehouse, you have a different sections in a warehouse. Some part is used for raw material storage, some part is used for production line su supply, and some part would be used for a finished product. So uh, you try to like, the example raw material has been taken from the uh, good receipt area to the production line area. That is uh, internal transport. Then again, uh, from production, the finished good has been produced. So you pick that one and put away in the uh, goods issue area from where you can uh, take it for the customer delivery, outbound deliveries. So these are like a simple examples how the internal transportation works. It's not necessarily that these kind of a transportation are causing a charging to you. There could be certain, uh, you might be asking somebody, a, a third party provider to do these services for you. Then these needs to be monitored and that one would be like a part of our transportation management area. The uh, 
external transportation as it says it is talking about a transportation outside that premise so in our example it might be the plant and it is expecting goods from supplier that is a external transportation or we can be supplying from our plant to the customer so that is an external uh, transportation the other one is like you are transferring from your production plant to a distribution center or you are transferring between two plants or distribution centers so plant to plant transfer could be something like a uh, one plant is producing something which is a raw material or a semi finished product for the next plant so you would be transferring that material from there to the next factory for consumption or there could be uh, the next factory is actually packing that material into a, dis a different cartons and then that would be going as a finished product so the, that's the between uh, factories for warehousing so i have a warehouse but it is very small within the factory and it is not having enough capacity to do or hold so much uh, products and do the supply to the customers so sometimes what we do is we take from our factory and put it in the strategically uh, located uh, distribution center it's nothing but a warehouse where you we keep uh, loads of volume there so that from there you can supply to multiple customers or different zones within that area the strategic a uh, position would be something where uh, that region or this plant or warehouse is such a way that from there the customer locations are nearby and the transportation pass from there to the customer is minimized so that we don't have to shell out more transportation cost uh, so that and we earn more profits out of the same product and supplying it to customer so these are types of transportations uh, these are within a company and outside a company so uh, let's talk about transportation and logistics a uh, logistics uh, i will be uh, talking about that definition uh, some uh, slides down the line from a supplier uh, supply chain professional perspective how he are they define logistics but as we have seen that logistics or transportation are uh, transportation is a part of logistics and logistics uh, itself is a big uh, or it is nothing but the supply chain management so transportation management makes a big impact in supply chain management and it is always seen the uh, product which are produced in a single point and gets consumed in the same area or same location so meaning uh, let's take an example what i mean by that is let's say i produce something in my plant is rarely used by me there itself regardless so raw material we buy it from somebody the supplier and we utilize it there so the consumption happens of uh, raw materials consumption happen in my plant but from where it is uh, initiated or re uh, removed is supplier's location when we talk about finished goods it is produced in my plant and sent to customer for the consumption so that's how uh, and in this one you have you can understand that it's never been consumed in a same location so there is always a transportation coming into picture so to, role of transportation even though uh, it is not visible but it is always there the value of transportation comes into picture with uh, inventories so you never do everything with the uh, inventory uh, optimization and everything is done from that perspective 
so nowadays everybody wants to keep minimum inventory and move out as much as possible so that uh, you don't have to pay for or holding that inventory is a kind of a cost to the company if you hold more inventory it's like a dead capital or sitting capital there and but it's not moving that's kind of a problem this one example you can understand when you talk about auto industry right currently auto industry <laughs> doesn't see a lot of autos going out the two wheelers four wheelers whatever wheelers you talk about those are not going out name any country because of uh, the demand has been reduced or overall the uh, demand uh, the supply chain has been supply is higher and demand is lower so that could be a reason or there is a disruption already happened because of the electric vehicles so the tesla the other electric vehicle the fossil fuel prices uh, are causing lot of disruption then environmental changes people are getting cautious with the environmental changes that you don't want the emissions to be so high that it's impacting you and the next generation so because of that the inventory optimization or inventory turnaround ratios are increased or optimization has to be there and you must have come across the terminology just in time forecast scheduling something like that so those are nothing but the impact that you want less inventory at your end and moving inventory everything should be moving out of your factory or whatever coming in should be getting churned into a finished product and moved out for a further uh, value addition so moving out everywhere of the transportation cost comes into picture and that's why transportation you cannot never um, you can you cannot be away from inventory and transportation these two would be there always because warehousing where the inventory is there and transportation these two together combined together will get you a effective way of controlling the cost the transportation not necessarily mean that uh, you should have like always uh, sending it out whatever is it is there the cost for moving that sometimes it is our own cost sometimes it is on customers where you need you need to recover from customer so those needs to be there and that needs to be uh in balance and that's why this uh, transportation and inventory plays very important role in supply chain uh i would like to give you another example here so the inventory optimization what i talked about due to current pandemic the covid situation uh everybody is looking at inventory and transportation why so the answer is simple the china is manufacturing many things and the material is coming from china the us uk the uh, european countries africa india is also there but the routes are a little bit different so that it is not directly coming from china to india right there is a himalayan uh, uh, ranges mountains with which the material has to cross so that planning needs to be done and each everything needs to be like impacting your cost or the way it is going to come and it's not always the uh, money which is for, which is important so here the value is time and place the material at right time at the right place is important uh, that combination has to be the value so if you say if the material reaches your place before time and you are not ready so the timing was wrong so is it makes a value no same thing if the material doesn't reach the customer on time it's 
wastage of the material and all because his requirement is not there so how wh what are you going to do supplying them beforehand and uh, talking about the uh, pandemic situation so uh, everybody wanted to have they already did the inventory optimization and reduced their inventory holding capacity but due to pandemic there was a sudden surge or they were expecting a lot of demand for certain items suddenly it increased and because of that the inventory calculations whatever were done were put were on toss so everybody at the supply chain uh, network optimization was required and now everybody is now thinking that how we can change the origin which is a china currently from there the manufacturing to some some other location and get the in case of such a surges you should be able to supply so they are thinking about if you talk about united states of america then they are looking at mexico a close by country where the manufacturing is easy not as cheap as china but it is effectively that way because if you count china manufacturing cost the transportation cost and time cost if those are uh, calculated it kind of mexico gives little bit upper hand not necessarily always but it depends on the situation so that's where uh, the value of transportation comes into picture be careful here i am just emphasizing time and place is important for this value of transportation so let's take i wanted to give you an example where the transportation comes into picture so let's take this our warehouse here oops sorry so we receive a demand from a customer okay customer demands via a sales order right so i am going to say uh, it is creating a sales order and from there okay and it comes to us then the sales order for which we received this demand what do we do then we ask supplier to provide us materials it should be a plant you can say a plant or warehouse that's fine uh, short form is wms so that's fine so we ask supplier to provide us some material so what i will do is so how do we com communicate it to him we send it him via a purchase order right so let me what he does he works on it and supplies us back and it is done via then so the transportation comes into picture 
then only we will receive the product in our warehouse. How do we communicate that to customer? So we do similar. I will draw something like a similar shapes from here to transport. Here if we do pick back. So let me insert here what processes we carry out here at warehouse. Take comma pack, comma load, and whatever the warehouse processes are done, we do those here and then transport, and then it reaches your customer, end customer here. So, in general, whenever you have a requirement coming your way, it's there are two times the transportation comes into your picture. And that's how the transportation management is kind of a plays an important role in the whole uh, process. And it's not necessarily that uh, transportation management is only this part or this part. It can work both ways. And that's where uh, it depends on a company whether they want to manage this one, this one, or something else. Okay. So let's talk about transportation roles. So the way the transportation roles, let me explain it with this diagram. So shipper. Shipper is the one who wants the material to be moved from one place to another place. In transportation terminology, it is consigner. And the customer, the destination is consigning. The next one is LSP, logistic service provider. Uh, that's a uh, acronym for logistic service provider LSP. Uh, he's the one actually executes the uh, transportation. But you say, as of now, I'm saying this, uh, the terminologies could be used multiple times in different uh, aspects. So shipper is the one who is actually requiring the products to be moved from point A to point B. And LSP is the one uh, logistic service provider who is do actually doing that or executing that part. So why these roles are required? So whenever we see the purchase side of it, then the consigner is supplier from where the materials are coming and you become the destination consignee are you but when the you do the supply to customer consigner are you and consignee is a customer and whether you have your own fleet or you ask somebody to do that one is totally that depends uh, or that defines the logistic service provider so uh, the roles are always uh, the terminology or the names would be used uh, differently over a, a period because a uh, shipper is the one who is requiring and uh, SAP terminology or shipper is the one who manufactures the goods and plans the execution or transportation of that one is again the same term used by uh, SAP. Uh, LSP is a logistic service provider and SAP uh, has a different way of looking at it. And it has a little more functions and more things to be done by them. So LSP scenarios or processes are a little bit more different. So talking about relationships, 
transportation relationships there are various ways uh, the relationships are seen so let's take a consigner so who takes an order from a consignee which is customer for us who sends a purchase order uh, which we receive it as a sales order so there is a contract between the two the consigner if he doesn't have the his own fleet then he gives a contract to a carrier carrier is nothing but a one who actually has a fleet and does that for you so maybe a ship line who does the shipping and a truck line who does the road transport so that contract is a freight contract and it could be done via freight forwarder it's another terminology in transportation a uh, freight forwarder takes the requirement and pass it on to a carrier to execute it they never do their own they never own this assets so freight forwarders are just like a third party uh, persons who take the orders and pass it on uh any questions on this one does anybody has any questions on that one uh i don't think so we can proceed maybe okay good uh so this is what i was talking about logistics uh, definition so a supply chain management professional always looks at logistics as a process of planning implementing controlling procedures of efficient and effective transportation and storage of goods and this includes services and related information from point of origin to the point of consumption so it's a big definition and uh, it covers almost all parts of it the important points here are efficient and effective processes and uh, it not only includes just the storage of goods but in uh, information and uh, the services in involved in this process so the logistics is not necessarily the services you procure from somebody else who is actually doing that one so when you want to do a transportation from your place to a customer's place then there would be like uh, the service you would be requesting from them and you pay for that uh, the, there are different ways of looking at this services so uh, packing service loading and loading services actually transportation services then again loading and loading services unpacking these are different ways of looking at it and there are different scenarios for that so moving on to the next one so let's see who are lsps there are different types of logistic service providers so the way i showed earlier the freight forwarders and carriers in the previous example of relationship so freight forwarders are a logistic service providers but they don't own anything they just plan and get it executed by somebody else this somebody execute somebody who does that execution are called carriers typically carriers are ship liners and uh, trucking companies so those are uh, the ones who own this fleet they want to optimize their uh, loads so that their runs are minimal but they get maximum output output from them now let's talk about types of transportations it is classified or generally generally uh, clubbed or are part as two types one is a container load wise another one is a truck load wise so container load is specifically used when you talk about ship ocean ship or ship uh transportation 
when you uh, move from one cont continent to another continent and that's where the uh, container load comes into picture it also comes into picture for air freight but uh, it's limited because air freight is very costly quick but costly everybody uh, my there are various ways of looking at it so we will be looking at that one in down the line so full truck load what is a full truck load as the name says the truck is completely filled with the whole material that's a that's a full truck load that not necessarily means that the, your truck is 100% filled it can be 80 to 90% filled and that's uh, still like a utilization perspective you have already utilized the whole truck uh, what is a less than truck load so anything less than a, a full truck load is called as a less than truck load the parcels uh, the ones which fedex or ups does as a document services those are called parcels those are part of less than a truck load but very specific and those are very less uh, as per the definition of parcels not necessarily the definition but as per the guidelines it would be less than 150 pounds uh, from weight perspective and it has a le uh, dimension requirement that it should not be more than 172 uh, inches. There is a formula for that one, the girth, is call it as a girth length. So it is two times length plus width. That is the way they uh, calculate that girth width. So let me show you something like what is that means. Let me utilize the same slide. So this is typically a cube, right? And here, so the girth is the formula for girth is two times width plus height. I'm sorry if I have misplay. Uh, told you earlier something wrong. So girth is this one and it should not be uh, greater than 172 pounds, uh, inches. So I'm talking about US uh, dimensions and what are the ways of looking at that one. So those are the ways uh, the transportation is uh, different scenario wise, it says that way. So uh, parcel is part of this LTL scenario. So what's the difference between a truck load and a container load? Uh, container essentially is the same thing, but uh, mostly uh, different containers are there. So if you are aware, uh, I don't know how many of you are uh, are aware of transportation processes or are working on that one. But in ship line, there are different ways of looking at the containers. There is a 42 feet, 40 feet, 53 feet containers. These are basically a different containers according to the dimensions of those containers. And based on that, this container uh, volumes are booked. And uh, when you have, generally people doesn't, won't book the whole container load. Generally, everybody does the less than a container load. So let's take an example. So what is a less than a container load? I want to pack my stuff from my apartment and send it to US. Currently, I'm in India. So if I want to do it from India to US, it would be less than a container load. So what's the difference between less than a container load and full container load? So what happens, this ship line or uh, various logistics service providers, 
take this requirement they take multiple less than a container load requirement they fill up the whole container then they take that whole container and move it across uh, from india to let's say us via ship and from there they deliver it and then they deconsolidate and again do the shipments so this less than a container load multiple of those will form a full container load and multiple of this full container load will form one big ship and from that ship it would be uh, it would be carrying everything and delivering at the destination and there each container is unloaded then everything is uh, taken out from that container and then shipped again to the respective destinations so uh full container loads are uh, specifically when uh, you are talking about a manufacturing plant who is asking full container load of uh, raw materials or you are asking somebody to do produce something for you in bulk so that's where the full container load comes into picture i i have a question so full yeah. truck load are relevant to road transportation mm -hmm. uh, and can full container load are relevant to shipping uh, transportation am i yes. correct yes and what yes are, uh, so uh, this multiples of fcl uh, refers to ship you have told right so how mm -hmm. it will be denoted in transportation management that uh, multiples of fcl into a uh, ship Ship so, be, how how will we denote that ship in transportation management? So what happens is that uh, multiple full container loads, like a ship will contain multiple uh, containers, right? Mm -hmm. So what happens? They uh, assign all these containers into one uh, forward booking or a ship uh, trip load, and there you will have. a different uh, like you combine multiple things so the way you see the less than a container load combined to form a full container load i told you right that uh, individual orders are taken from multiple uh, folks like me who wants to transport their uh, material or whole furniture from india to us so uh, everybody sends the requirement this uh, shipping line they have a consolidation point okay which receives everything and they combine multiple loads less than a container loads into one full container load okay and such multiple full container loads are loaded onto a ship so the ship will have its own id which would be carrying all this container full container loads that uh, that would be having its own way of uh, identifying a booking order okay forwarding order so right booking so this is a kind of uh, second leg in your transportation right correct you have yes. a route mm -hmm. so yes. typically typically from point a to point b uh, mm. from a to a1 it can be a truck from a1 to a2 the second leg which is uh, the consolidation of the container okay uh, yes the carriage yeah. main carriage on carriage you you mean to say yes yes uh, can be so uh, the main carriage on carriage is what on carriage is like a, the ship uh, already left the port okay okay and uh, this uh, what about this uh, uh, train transportation and flight transportation uh, air and sea comes under freight booking right so yes. um, how this flight uh, transportation will be denoted will it be fca uh, freight transportation yes will have a combination it is would be a lcl type of thing because uh, freight will not have the air transport will not have the full container uh, kind of uh, denotations but it will be combining the lc lcls okay what about train but 
Yes, train transportation. Is. Some goods rail will carry the goods, right? How how it will yeah. be known? Those would be combination of multiple FTLs. The that is called intermodal transportation. Uh, intermodal. Uh, mm -hmm. No, intermodal. Mm -hmm. Intermodal transportation is a combination of one or two means of transport, oh. meaning truck, truck into a rail, a rail into a ship. Something like that. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Yeah, and it will have multiple full truck loads because each truck load will be one uh, carriage on that train. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. Yes, somebody was uh, saying something. Yeah. Else. Suppose if the if the flight transportation, if it is a cargo flight. Uh, mm -hmm. Is it a complete different process, or it is still determined through um, these four uh, different types of transportation? Uh, for freight, uh, air transport, it would be part of this container loads. So, uh, part of it would be use, using this container loads. Uh, so, uh, mm -hmm. so from the from the config standpoint. Mm -hmm. There are only four uh, different types of transport, period. No matter whether you go by rail, road, or air, uh, air, water, it still have to have any of these uh, uh, map to it. Is my understanding right? Uh, yes, that's uh, in a simple way. Yes, that is the way. Yes. Okay. So generally, you. a full, yeah, thanks. So uh, to give you another, uh, like somebody has uh, mentioned freight booking and freight order. So freight orders are handling the truck loads and freight booking handle the container loads. Uh, and this is the SAP transportation management terminology. I just don't want it to go there as of now because I wanted this to be an introduction to transport management not necessarily SAP's transport management. Oh, okay. So this is more generic uh, vendor neutral way of defining Correct. transportation, yes. transport management. Yeah, yes. Okay, so, so SAP, uh, SAP uses a different terminology, uh, one for booking and uh, one for order. Is that right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So the freight order, which is nothing but the truck load kind of a concept. Freight order in SAP and freight okay. booking. So, is it a notation or is it the um, culture of understanding or by definition? It's a, a culture of understanding, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. No Anybody has another other questions? I know I'm uh, just covering uh, certain scenarios and not necessarily uh, these are the ones which are covering uh, everything would be part of this uh, course and the terminologies would be a little different, but uh, from transportation perspective, these are the types of transportations. So uh, somebody was mentioning legs and uh, the pre-carriage, on-carriage, uh, carriage. So these are the, uh, the pre-carriage and all terminology comes in the container loads. And uh, the legs and all is the way of looking at the transportation, how it has been broken down from source to destination. Uh, if there are any different means of transport, those are called as a legs, and that would be uh, part of our uh, master data and other aspects. Are we good here, or there are questions on this? Still, Ali? Uh, yeah. It's a little bit confusion. Um, mm -hmm. Then uh, types of carriage and uh, legs are one and the same? No, 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 no. I don't think so. No, no, no. It is okay. not. <laughs> Types of carriage is the way you uh, talk about it's, the container. Uh, means pre carriage, main carriage, th that is the thing I'm speaking. Correct, correct. Um, yeah. But uh, 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 
if 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 we don't take away your session uh, mm-hmm. my understanding is based mm-hmm. on the volume and size of your load you are typically okay. categorizing uh, how much um, based on your volume and uh, uh, quantity uh, you are defining the way you need to move these goods yeah rather than how in what way you are taking it yeah pre carriage means uh, from shipper to airport pre carriage main carriage yeah, can be that, flight thing and from flight to uh, consignee can be uh, uh, on carriage on carriage yeah. yeah i think uh, that is much more deeper detail of uh, <laughs> the various mm-hmm. stages of your transport where it oh. is whether it is mm-hmm. at the pre carriage level or it already left the port or it is already on the sea so that okay. is uh, that uh, typically determines uh, the status of your uh, goods uh, for okay. you for you to uh, exactly locate where they are right legs Ari? means routes uh, legs determined in e- ecc while creating uh, shipment legs get get got determined like that you used yeah, to uh, i don't think uh, this will be a right uh, uh, time or uh, situation <laughs> to discuss right <laughs> sorry sorry yeah. if we are trying to hijack uh, hijack stuff from here. <laughs> okay. no 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 uh, that uh, yeah. not an issue uh yes so about half knowledge, not... half knowledge making confusions really no, no, no. Uh, yes uh, i don't uh, i'm maga but anyway um, the, the the way sap utter confuses things is kind of uh, provides more demand for consultants okay uh, um, uh, that's one way blessing in this guys but uh, typically what um, um, uh, see these are very generic uh, transportation uh, definitions either it is used by sap or someone else in the market Uh, is still um, it's a un- uh, it's a industry standard ftl or ltl fcl or lc mm-hmm. that's what um, is it's not a sweeping generalization per se but uh, this is what it is okay go ahead adi yeah, i'll shut up <laughs> myself <laughs> thank you naga no problem uh, and <laughs> uh, those are like um uh, i just wanted to uh, tell you guys about transportation and what are the types that's why this came up not necessarily uh these scenarios will be differently handled by a logistic service provider and shippers differently because everybody will have a different way of looking at it from logistic service provider the full container load or less than container loads are the big chunk of the processes but for shipper mostly they go for the truck loads majorly they are dependent not necessarily only this way but somebody might be doing a, a export type of work then they would be requiring this thing so yeah uh, and the truck load will be part of this container load as well so there would be a interlink between everything so uh, don't get confused on what needs to be done right now but there are other uh, i wanted to uh, give you guys the uh, terminologies what are used in transportation so uh, that's why i have this covered or i am showing this one here but uh, these would be part of and once we go into much more details when the we look at a scenario wise then this will make more sense and you guys will be able to see what what are those in details so moving on to the next one so yeah. modes modes of transport the, yeah th- this is only a trailer the full <laughs> picture is yet to release <laughs> <laughs> yes so i just wanted to give you that uh, we were just looking at modes of transport so there are four modes one is maritime which is nothing but a sea or ship the rail 
trucking and air rail and trucking forms your road land logistics and maritime and uh, air freight are different altogether so you just see the storage cost and transportation cost this is kind of a, just a way of looking at the modes of transport the trucking is cost effective but uh, storage wise it is very low same goes for air the storage wise it goes very low but cost is the highest rail are cost effective cheaper uh, but their uh, transportation costs are higher but the storage capacity is much higher sorry my mistake and ship is the cheapest way from cost perspective and having higher storage volumes so when we talk about means of transport or how to transport goods from point a to source to destination then uh, this kind of a diagram will always help you a lot because that's where you will understand majorly where the cost is lower and where is the storage cost and it's always what we have to do is get the optimized thing where you want the optimum storage and optimum cost so that's the optimum is as of now here it shows railways but <laughs> it it is not necessarily the same uh so let let's take some examples of this one so if i want to move i'm taking an indian example uh locations from india so let's take uh, i want to move from nagpur to chennai uh you have like a four ways of only three ways sorry <laughs> no merit <laughs> uh shipment Uh, or instead of nagpur we will go to kolkata maybe kolkata to chennai then from kolkata i can travel by rail i can go by ship i can go by air and i can drive all the way from kolkata to chennai so as you know ship is the cheapest way but it takes a long time so the cost you remember i was talking about it time and place right if you are not on the right time it's loss uh, from usage perspective and if it is not on the right place it is again a loss so uh, that way if you look at it the ship will take you there but it would be at slower space the next one would be a rail you can Come by rail, but it takes a long time. Better than a ship, but it's uh, still the time consuming. If you drive from Kolkata to Chennai, you can reach on that uh, destined time, but you are losing or you are incurring more cost, right? Uh, but if you travel by air you are there within 1 hour 1 and 1/2 hour maximum but the cost are very high so that's how all the we are talking just by a uh, uh, human transport much <laughs> that uh, goods transport would be similar to that one so it would be that uh, explanation <clears throat> so whenever we do a transport planning we have to always think about this uh, combinations sometimes rail schedules won't match or rail schedules are best one when you have like a enough lead time same goes for ship but when it is an urgency the next day shipments are generally comes under this or this category where the trucks are moved on priority basis and you get it uh, shipped within a driving distance or something then it is possible but if it is far away then yes you need to get it via air freight so the other example let's take a uh, talk about the classic 
e-commerce examples. Uh, I take an Amazon example uh, or Flipkart from Indian uh, e-commerce web. So if you take an order there, they generally tell you that, or they dictate that this will come to you so and so. They, they have always counted this or this kind of a transport based on the, your location. So if you are in metros, then you might be getting either the air or the rail transport, less probably. If you are not there, then they have a strategic locations as their uh, distribution centers from where they arrange the transport. And generally they stock up their this uh, distribution centers with certain uh, high moving items so that uh, whenever demand comes, they are able to supply within the time. So uh, talking about that, I wanted my watch to be delivered tomorrow. If I'm in Mumbai, I will get that one done, maybe a few hours. Amazon or Flipkart might give you a better options, saying that, hey, you can get it here, but they will charge me for that shipment cost, right? Uh, maybe I know most of you guys, uh, if you talk about metro cities or where the uh, airport connectivity is there, then yes, you will get those one time. But uh, normally they try to push it by trucking or rail, not rail, but trucking, where they take a laid back time, they plan it according to their leisure time and then uh, distribute. So that's how the charge and modes of transport determine. Uh, so, any question on this one or does anybody has other questions on this one? I know parcel so, doesn't fit um, in. Yeah. So my yeah. understanding, uh, this is more uh, on, uh, this helps you more on the, uh, exp uh, how you can calculate the cost of your freight, correct? Yes, yes. Uh, and this can give an advantage to the shipper and also an LSP. It's, val it's available in both scenarios. Correct, yes. Okay, from a planning perspective. Yes, uh, so from very, uh, like I said, uh, the way I was looking at from Kolkata to Chennai, if I want to travel, I have to be like, if I'm traveling by rail, then I have to stick to their schedules, right? But if it is my own car, I can start right now and reach Chennai within time, right? That's the yeah. flexibility you get for tra road transport. And that is that is again a cost, right? If you don't have a car, car it's a taxi service and you're paying more money for that taxi, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. But if you go by a rail, it's fixed schedule, a rail schedule, you have to stick and you reach Chennai according to that schedule. So if you, can, you are not, uh, mm -hmm. but you can guarantee we'll be reaching on time or not. Uh, you can't guarantee that because uh, mm -hmm. rails can have a delays due to any of the reasons. But yeah, it is possible. But majorly, uh, the rail schedules are good when you have enough time. So you don't have to be like uh, urgently like. I have to be in Chennai in three hours. Then there is no option for you. You have to take the flight. <laughs> because uh, uh, traveling by car will not be like a three hours. You will not be able to reach Chennai in that scenario. If it is like a, you have to reach by tomorrow, then you have these two options, rail or this one. I'm not taking, I'm taking hypothetical, uh, hypothetical example where I don't know exactly the timings between Kolkata and Chennai, but uh, that's, uh, the railway might provide you, like you sit in afternoon and reach by more morning, but with your own car, you can drive maybe 12 hours straight, which causes 
uh, uh, pain in uh, frustration you will be uh, worn out and may not be have enough sleep maybe for that meeting or something so that will be again there no no those are all side effects which sap cannot capture <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah but the cost wise it would be there right yeah. just to be a hypothetical example so that way and uh, if you have a more time say you have to reach in like three days or four days then you can think about a ship as well right ship generally takes two two days or three days one and a half days generally but that would be additional thing but cheaper way but slower way slow that's uh, the purpose i wanted to show you this diagram was that that how the cost and means of transport will be seen in this generally this is helpful for us when we do the planning and we need to deduce that which way should be the cheapest way and other way. so talking about types of transportation the uh, different types of transportation what we saw here are the general terminologies and these are from more from the destination perspective these are the destination perspective transportation types so what is a direct shipment so you have a full truck load or full container and it is going from point a to point b simple it's a full truck load scenario that's where uh, for now let's look at the truck and road thing so i want to move from kolkata to chennai and i have that full kind of truck full truck uh, loads with me meaning my furniture is enough to fill that whole truck so that way if it is that i know from where i have to start and where i have to end so that is a direct shipments yes yeah, so a typical example is you're moving it's a relocation so you're right. moving yeah. from mm -hmm. you're not stopping anywhere you know the destination address you know where you pick up your goods you're done mm -hmm. yes okay the taking on the same thing if i'm moving from uh, the milk runs i'm talking about milk runs so milk runs are a typical scenario that uh, you pick up from multiple positions and you drop at multiple positions so the relocation thing we will take another example uh, i have only like a postman postman yes he picks up from multiple boxes keeps in his uh, thing makes uh, his bag is full then he goes to office distribute there dump there from there somebody picks it up and takes according to their zone the full bag or whatever bag is full for that zone he takes and drops at multiple locations so that's a milk run not necessarily only pick multiple times and drop multiple times it could happen that uh, let's take a, a milk run example in the industry perspective okay so uh, my whole ship load came and i am now transferring that to my multiple locations i have say four locations let me draw that one so let's say i have a plant a okay where everything is there hmm? now let me okay so in this scenario it's a full truck from a okay it is going from a to position plant b okay here it drops something like a, some parts are dropped at b and from b to d something has been loaded onto the truck and the truck is again full now it goes from b to c it drops material from a to c then from c to d something has been picked up 
and the truck is still full and from c to d it makes that trip and here everything is dumped so you see that it's not just only one pickup point i have taken as of now that there is no uh, always uh, loading and loading but here everything is loaded from that ship for a b c d location a was dropped and from there everything is moved from a to b b to a to c a to d thing uh, uh, whatever the requirements were there were loaded on this truck and from here it made a journey it was full truck load and in this whole journey the truck was never empty it was full there was no empty space and it became empty only at d so this kind of a run is or load is called mill truck the, the typical example uh, in vast majority of uh, these rental cars uh, <laughs> passengers yes. from a rental rental car point to different uh, um, uh, different terminals mm -hmm. like the, uh, you have 30 passengers picked up at rental car point and mm -hmm. uh, point uh, terminal a united 20 people get down another 10 mm -hmm. people get in you know uh, yeah. we can give uh, that is yeah, yeah, yeah. right yes or you can take a your flight example so the flight is actually from one position a to position d and it has a passenger from a to b or, or a to d all are filled in the location a it takes flight and uh, or takes off and lands in b some are unloaded and some are loaded or passengers get down and some are add uh, from there so that continues that is the yes we also said the rental car example yes uh, generally people uh, combine or come in the rental car together a car rental car pool right that is the way uh, this milk run comes into yeah uh, that's easily understandable <laughs> so yes this milk run is not supported when we have uh, tm and ewm integration <laughs> unfortunately <laughs> yeah e ewm uh, in fact uh, yeah i think there are several complications uh, so mm -hmm. Uh, you mean integrated in the S4 HANA kind of a scenario or two different landscapes? You name anything. TMEWM integration doesn't support milk runs. If you have a, a TM system, so there you can plan multiple loads and loading and unloading. But when we combine that to the EWM integration, it doesn't support. The simplicity okay. uh, because there is a so the freight order what we call here in the uh, transportation management is becomes a transportation unit in ewm and that uh, it they cannot uh, like bring the same multiple times it so is possible is it big, yeah mm -hmm. it is a typical challenge in the sap product itself that's what you mean yes yes yeah okay so but uh, these kind of uh, um, scenarios are not that popular in transportation business either right so, uh, uh, people wants to do that one but uh, as a lsp we don't uh, require to do that milk runs right now <laughs> suppose if you are in a warehouse a, a huge yes. warehouse like amazon yeah or in then, other yeah. automated warehouse the milk runs yes. do uh, yeah. happen but that is within the warehouse not outside yeah. the warehouse. yeah 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 and it makes sense and there are ways of handling this kind of a thing so i would have done like a multiple freight orders and linking them with the something else in the that okay. one so if you talk about this one whatever the shipments a to c a to d I create a different freight orders, but send them or execute in EWM differently. That's one way of doing it. So if you want to execute that, 
there are ways of doing it but i'm just telling a standard sap doesn't support mill currents when it is a tmwm integration okay okay the next one is a partial loads so partial loads is a part of mill currents the uh, why i'm saying that one is like you do now let's take another example the same example so let's say a is my plant or a distribution center and from there i am going for b c d these are all my destination customers to whom i have to deliver b on its own is not making full truck load same goes for c or d they all three combine make a full truck load so it is me who planned it and utilize the full truck load and then i am doing this uh the strip so a to b i drop something at b then go to c drop uh, the requirement what c was requ requesting and then make it to d where everything is or my truck becomes empty so, so in the intermediate points you will not be picking up anything it is yes. always a drop a drop yes okay so this is called multi stage uh, load multi point load or something like that so those uh, are the this is supported in both ewm integration yeah, yeah, yeah. yes yes so ewm will load it first d then c then b that way it will be loading that part from ewm and we have to tell them what needs to go from b c d so it is possible in that way uh and again yes. uh, this is for a truck load concepts right yes i am talking about truck load and uh, container loads will always be like this one yeah <laughs> nobody orders full container unless you are a full manufacturer and asking full container load no, suppose if way. you are uh, if you are a commodity trader uh, yeah, depends yeah, upon yeah. your nature of business right yes yes like a coal or soft commodities or hard commodities mm -hmm. uh, you will be all sending them in the whole train correct train or container full ship loads so that is possible yeah. yes so uh, yeah but majorly when you talk about a logistic service providers majorly you will see this less than truck load and all partial loads scenarios coming into yeah so uh, lsps are uh, the, the quite popular examples of these fedexes and uh, dhl mm -hmm. these kind of these kind yes. of people right yes in india like gati and all okay yeah blue yeah. dot mm -hmm. blue dot uh so that's if they are still active in their business i don't know it is between <laughs> 15 and 20 years back <laughs> yes so these are the things i wanted to cover uh, i think i have covered majorly the terminologies for transportation management and other uh, things which are there commonly used in the system so now i open up for question and answer Yeah, uh, thanks, Adi. I think you you tolerated vast majority of discussion. Thanks on that. Um, so uh, for all these scenarios, you will be uh, training us in the config or uh, the demo portion of it. So uh, when we will be going through this whole uh, whole scenarios and all. Yes, we will be doing config as well as the business process. How it is executed. what needs to be done from uh, execution of this business process perspective so yeah okay and do you I think you uh, honestly will you be able to cover all these scenarios okay this is moving a mountain uh, every <laughs> single uh, you are right naga but the thing yeah. is uh, we will uh, try to cover as much as possible and uh, there are multiple things like when you do a full truck load thing 
the less than truck load would be part of it uh, when you do the small scenario. So it's a scenario wise. Yes, it is uh, many things you can't, <laughs> but we will try to do uh, major things in this course. Yes. And what is the prerequisite? Uh, so uh, do we need to know the background or a config before we show up or uh, is like plug and play, you will be uh, saying everything and uh, assuming that we all understand and have <laughs> knowledge in knowledge and uh, uh, in the background of conflict because these are two different things so if you are a power user you uh, it is always good to um, it's uh, storytelling will really help but if it is uh, something that we need to take advantage of this uh, training obviously mm -hmm. there is a lot involved uh, from the student standpoint as well. We need to have the access to the system, do the config, uh, mud the waters as, as dirty as possible, and then come out with questions. So what, yeah. the, uh, what is promised at this point in time and uh, what is the plan of delivery? So Naga, we would be covering uh, the basic topics as well as the uh, system access would be given to you for doing that thing. And okay. uh, I would be giving you certain model uh, company codes, what is the config I have done, what needs to be done. Those would be definitely shared and it's up to you uh, how to, you want to get the water dirty, how much water <laughs> money you want to make. Yeah, so you already have a pre-configured scenario which you will run and uh, and we mimic what you have done. Is that understanding correct? Uh, no, I will be configuring something more for uh, this sessions. We will be seeing okay. the standard one and uh, we will create our own structures and uh, based on that understanding, you can do as per your requirements and your so and the, uh, what will be the to total duration of the course? Sorry, I'll be done with this last question. Yeah. Uh, generally, it takes two months of a time, but based on the interactions and all, then it might go for two and a half or three months. And each session will be like uh, 60 minutes or? Uh, uh, depends. Uh, it's not necessarily 60 minutes. If the session goes on and uh, there are uh, doubts and all, it, it can go for two and a half to three hours. Okay. Uh, hi, Adi Rutesh, I have a question. Mm -hmm. okay. So, I mean, this was really nice okay. so far, but uh, I uh, was wondering, uh, as I understand, you know, we'll make our own uh, structures, then we will also configure each scenario. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. we will look at the business process first, and mm -hmm. like you explained today, then second mm -hmm. step would be, we will start to make the structure and configure that specific business process, which is uh, uh, mm -hmm. being discussed that particular day. Mm -hmm. And is then the uh, we run that, Indeed? right? This is the understanding. Mm -hmm. Yes, Ritesh. Right? Exactly. Can you call so, after Anama, half an hour? Where is the Zoom link? Could you please send the Zoom link? So uh, my simple request would be that if we could, uh, you know, um, the uh, business process discussion is fine. I know you would be able to explain it nicely. Uh, creating the structure, config structure is also fine. Like, uh, and then when we are running the whole thing, I have seen in the, like the previous trainings, we say, okay, this is step one, this is step two, <laughs> this is step three, you know. But what uh -huh. I haven't seen is, uh, and what I would like to see in this training is um, the steps for configuration uh, mentioned precisely before we start doing it. I know there would be like 10 steps, but there would be like 20 pages. You get what I'm saying? Like typical yes. SAP config with screenshots, you do this, but mm -hmm. in short, you can say like we are creating a VAS order in EWM. So I will say, okay, there has to be like step one, uh, some structure has to be created, step two, uh, you know, packaging material has to be done. The element has to be done, stuff like that. Correct. So that yeah. in one slide, we can see, okay, this is what we are going to do. 
and then you don't have to remember everything then each little detail you can refer the document and after you practice one or two rounds i think then you are good so will that be possible to have that you know uh, summary of configuration steps for each scenario because i think uh, and i feel i've uh, had first hand experience last year it is very important for the long run when you're practicing okay. Uh, Adi, let me answer it, Parminder here. Hey, hi, Ritesh. Yeah. So, uh, Ritesh, what we are doing, we understand, and we also keep on improving on our training. So, what we have done in this training, apart from Adi, we have a specific person, Swati, would be there, only to create an assignment after the session, and release the assignment with the candidates with step-by-step -step procedures and the screenshots. So each session will follow. It will take after the Adi has take session. It will take around a couple of days to prepare a assignment for it. And all the screenshot and steps would be there in that assignment. And that would be shared with you. That would be shared. So we have uh, our blogs. So Swati would be writing for each session. She would be writing a blog. And that blog we will be sharing with you in Google Classroom. So there would be a... a training video would be there and that training video would be supported with the blog link and the blog link would be explaining in text if you want to don't want to go through the full video if you just want to quickly read it what has been done in the session and you want to see the screenshot and steps of the configurations or master data creation that would be available. So that improvement, we are doing it for this uh, week training starting in both PP and MM. We have supported trainers with the additional consultants who would be working on that part. Yeah, that sounds nice, Paminder. But here, uh, you know, I had a bad experience last year with a training. That's why I'm being very specific here. What I'm looking for is not even the screenshots. You know, like I said, we create master data. And then you create a packaging order, uh, uh, packaging material, you create the element, just the summary of those steps, which a person can see in one slide, because I have very restricted time to practice. And within that time, I have to do, say, for example, I, if I run three scenarios, that will be great. You know, that's why I have planned next three months like that. So. Um, if mm -hmm. that's possible, that's fine. If not, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, that's that's very good point. That's very good point. So each blog which we can do is we can put a summary first. And then it can go into the detail of the screenshots. Yeah, exactly. That's what I meant. Perfect. Yeah. Thank yeah. you so much. So there was a question from V. Verma. Uh, in addition to FTL, LTL, FCL, LCL, uh, have also seen small package shipments. I'm sure we'll be covering that scenario used a lot in pharma. So yes, I just covered that part as a parcel shipments and it would be part of that one. Yes. Adi, if anybody asks what are the types of transportation, should we tell FTL, LTL, uh, like that, or uh, milk runs, um, told, right? Those should tell. Milk runs, which includes FTL, LCL, right? LTL. Yeah, milk runs can be anything. Uh, it's just the term, uh, process or the way it has executed. Uh, yeah, so. I have given you an example of a road transportation, but it can be done with a ship as well. Generally, ship transports are like that one, uh, apart from the big, uh, the ore industry, so where coal industry or the mining industry, where whole ship is for them, kind of that way, or rigs, generally yeah. the petroleum rigs, where it, it is full. Yeah, in your previous presentation, you have given a uh, some basic shipper scenario and you have uh, mm -hmm. shown us how delivery proposal gets created. And mm -hmm. uh, there might be a scenario where transportation proposal gets created, right? In that yes. step. Yes. So when you talk about transportation proposals, those are like, yes, those would be there. It would be part of the uh, scenarios, yes, different scenarios, but uh, it would be covered, yes. Elytra, we didn't discuss about that Elytra and transportation differences. Why transportation management compared to Elytra? Yes, uh, it would be uh, tomorrow's session where it would be covered. 
Padma. Mm -hmm. uh, because today, as I told you that I wanted uh, you guys to be uh, introduced to the transportation terminologies and the uh, way, the scenarios and what is the importance of it. So it is more like a transportation introduction, irrespective of uh, SAP or ERP system. Okay. Uh, Adi, so can to, you quickly cover the topics for tomorrow? Yes. So tomorrow we will be talking about SAP architecture, TM architecture. Uh, so how it has been moved or SAP is a transportation management has been evolved from whatever it was earlier. So earlier it was LETRA, then it became uh, SAP TM 8.1, 6.0, then 8.1, 8, then 9, 9.1 and 9.5. Those are the ones, uh, then what would be the architecture, uh, SAP's way of, what are the things which would be covered in this uh, system architecture and all. So those would be uh, part of tomorrow's session. And there is a module called TPVS, right? Transportation Vehicle Scheduling. In my previous projects used to have that module, but I don't know in depth of it. Uh, is that part of Elytra? Transportation? TPVS, Vehicle Scheduling. TPVS is a SAP module only. Yeah. Uh, I have to check that one, Padma. Yeah, so Padma, so. TPVS was, uh, uh, was part of the APO, Advanced Planning and Optimization. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. SAP has long back, they have stopped it. And TPVS actually has came up with the TM. So they stopped TPVS and they came up with the TM. TM on okay. SCM and now they came up with embedded TM on SAP S4 oh, HANA. Yeah. So both would be available, SCM TM and embedded TM on S4 HANA, but TPVS has been stopped long back. I think, I think if we don't have any other question, we can we can close the session, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay, okay. So guys, you can also join tomorrow's session, uh, same time. Uh, and we are closing for today if you don't have any other question. Thank you, Bomendo. Okay, thank you everyone, bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye.